Welcome back to the Unaware Podcast, the podcast where we just talk about life and how it's okay not to know the outcome and it's okay just to go for it. But um, as always, it's your host, Andrew Ludy. And your co-host, Paul Kanner. Um, well, today, guys, um, we're just to just have a kind of a simple conversation this time. We've had a lot of guests on recently and um, we actually got to launch a few weeks ago for real and so... Got a lot of feedback and um, a lot of positive, exciting things. Oh, and, yeah. Um, yeah, we're excited. Just keep going. But today, Paul, we're going to talk a little bit about us as little children. Uh-huh. Um, you know, kind of where we came little from. Little Paul. Little Paul. It's hard to believe, but you were once <laughs> little a <Ludi>. small man. <laughs> little Ludy. That's young, a good one. Young Ludy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know. It's, it's for me, you know, I want to talk about this because it's always – interesting to see how people are raised and you know who they are today and where they came from that's not something a lot of people talk about too so. no it's something i'm bad at talking about too um, yeah, some people have like scarring childhoods and they don't like to talk about it and but it's, it's but like a part it's, of who it's you are. like who you are and like how you got to be the yeah. way that you carry yourself yeah i mean for me i, I never did a lot of like I guess, analyzing of my past until this one conversation I had, which I'll I'll talk more about it later. But people were like, hey, oh, so that's why you're like this now. And I was like, what? (laughs) And my mind just like. Um, So I I just I think it's an interesting thing. And I I think most people should do it, you know, and you know, kind of like you said, there's a lot of scars, a lot of pain, but, you know, understanding where you came from. It helps a lot. Mm. So, and I mean, even to learn about how other people are raised. That's true. Um, helps me know how people are and how to help them out and stuff like that. So, um, to kind of jump into it. It's kind of like that uh, nature versus nurture. Oh, yeah. 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 The way you're raised. Mm-hmm. How that's much how impact you're... it has on mm-hmm. you. And yeah. I do think that's different for everyone. Yeah. You know, how well, much sure they is. let their past impact them. But at the end of the day, there there is impact. It There, has there, to there is something. <laughs> no matter what, like, you're part of, of that, your past. It's part Everything of you. so, you've experienced has led you to who you are right now. Ooh, that's a big thought. <laughs> it's and, true, and, though. Yeah, I know. And, I mean, that's only going to continue to change. Like, you know, one thing I'm excited about, this is kind of off topic, for this podcast, you know, let's say five, even 10 years down the road, I look back at this and I'm like, that, that was me. Like a young 22 year old kid. (laughs) I mean, technically let's say 10 years, I'll be 32, almost 33. And there's just so much life in that 10 years. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows how I'm going to change and Dude, in go with years, that. I'll be like 34, 35. I know you'll be halfway through your 30s, Paul. That's it's, hard to think about. <laughs> it's going to fly by, though. Um, I'm, I'm excited, though. I, I think this, this decade's going to be awesome. So Hopefully um, COVID will be over soon. <laughs> you're telling me. Well, Paul, what, what kind of kid were you? What kind of kid was I? Yeah. All right. Uh Let's I'm see. intrigued. I honestly don't know a whole lot about your childhood. Yeah, there's a reason for that. I don't talk about it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm one of those people that doesn't talk about their childhood. I know I said it earlier, but <laughs> I don't. I don't talk I about know. it that much. I know. Uh, so, as a child, I was. Well, I grew up with three brothers, so there's four of us, all boys. So you can imagine how crazy that household was. I can. I have a similar upbringing. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was the older middle child. Okay. Tim was the oldest. I was and the you. second oldest. And Michael and Luke. Okay. What's the um, age difference? We were all born within five, five and a half years of each other. Okay. So Tim is about... Math is hard. <laughs> How old is a Tim? year? A year and five months older than me. Okay, and then I am almost two years older than Michael. And then Michael, Michael and Luke are pretty close. Michael right? was uh, just under 
two years older than Luke. Okay. Like a year and eight months. That's right. No, Michael, ten months. Michael is my age. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Older my middle child, me and Michael and Luke, we just kind of bonded over the same stuff and we always hung out and got into shenanigans together. And then mm-hmm. there was like Tim, he did his own thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like me, Michael, and Luke were like the three musketeers. Like we did everything together. We got in trouble together. Um, speaking of trouble, I. I was being like the older child, Mm -hmm. the older middle child. You get blamed for a lot of things. (laughs) And uh, Luke was a bit of a snitch. Luke, bro, I know you're going to listen to this. Come on, man. He he grew out of that, though. He he, he definitely was a snitch. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Um, (laughs) But yeah, we had we had good times. We were very, like, adventurous and, like, creative. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, But, like, growing up with, like, our parents, uh, we had a lot of rules that we had Mm -hmm. to follow. We had to be, like, back at the house at, like, a certain time, like, before dark. Um, We didn't have phones back then, believe it or not. So we actually had to... Bring a walkie-talkie. Dude, I remember those days. To, like, our friend's house down yeah. the street. And then our mom or dad would radio. Mm-hmm. I miss those days. I don't. Dude, like, rolling around on your bike in your neighborhood with a walkie-talkie attached to you. That Those were fun. <laughs> like, come on. Playing around in the neighborhood with other kids. Like, 10-4, 10-4. You know, just, like, <laughs> fake radioing. Yeah, but... It wasn't like us communicating with the kids. It was us communicating well, well, with our parents. I always, we always did like, we had like neighborhood kids who would all have like a walkie talkie and you could like call people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like kind of like the family side of it. Mm-hmm. But in school, I was a bit of a teacher's pet. <laughs> really? There's no way. Not yeah. that, when yeah. that changed. I was a, I was a, a nerdy kid. Teacher's pet, like I just—that's it, true. Like, that's I was hard very, to believe. I was very because college, blanket. you <laughs> <laughs> never went to class, didn't do homework. I don't. What? When did that, dude? What happened? It's <laughs> <laughs> a great question. Um, yeah, like I was straight A student. Yeah, I, I got really good grades. I was. I had a good relationship with my teachers. Like, um, mm-hmm. I didn't really get in trouble, and I got in trouble like one time, and I cried about it. <laughs> like, I was, I was that kid. Like, yeah, got in trouble, cried about it in like fourth grade, and um, I just like try to stay out of trouble, try to stay on the teacher's good side. Um, I had some friends, but it like wasn't. I wasn't, like, popular or anything. Mm. Like I was, like, kind of nerdy. <laughs> like, I was really into, like, frogs and, like, reptiles and stuff like that wow. in elementary school. <laughs> so I mean, like, yeah, I, I think that stemmed from, like, my second teacher, who was also my third grade teacher. Yeah. I said second. My second grade teacher was also my third grade teacher. She followed us to third grade. She was also like very into frogs mm. and like frogs everywhere around the room. <laughs> like not like actual frogs, just like pictures of frogs. Yeah. Decorations and stuff. So you just loved frogs? Yeah, I love frogs and do you still love bears? Frogs? <laughs> are you are you a big frog guy no. today? No, not at all. But uh so you're, like, you're a good kid. I was a good kid. Yeah. Was a good when, kid. when did it all go wrong? <laughs> How did it go wrong? How did I become what I am right now? <laughs> a slacker. Um, <laughs> have you have you actually ever um 
like thought about that? Have you ever gone back and wondered and looked where at your child? Wrong. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's we're. I'm kidding about that. I know, I know. Nothing went wrong. Um, have you ever like looked back at your childhood and like saw how you were raised the way you were and how that led to who you are now? Yeah. So, uh, with like strict parents, mm-hmm. that the the kids usually turn into rebellious kids because once you kind of broke the rule and got away with it you try to break it again Mm -hmm. and see what line like how close you can get to that line where you're you're having like a good time but you're not getting in trouble for it Mm. so i think um where was I going with that? I don't know. Where were you going <laughs> What was with the that? question? How, how is, like, have you ever analyzed your past? To see yeah, yeah. So, now? like, definitely became, like, someone who wanted to experience life. Mm-hmm. Like, because I feel like I, like, my childhood was very, like, restricted. Like, I didn't watch a lot of movies. Like, we didn't have, like, family movie night. You watch Star Wars, right? Yeah, of course okay, I watched Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. That's, all, that, that's all you need. Of course, I saw Revenge <laughs> of the Sith in the theater. Oh, what a memory! But like, with strict parents, like, as you get older, they kind of become less strict. Mm-hmm. Depends on how you act, though. Like, if you're if you're just a really crappy kid, and like you're you treat your parents bad, then things aren't going to go well for you <laughs> later in life. Like when you when you get to like when you can drive, when you yeah. can like leave without when you start developing your own life. Yeah, essentially. like when yeah. you when you start developing your own life and like you actually become like more independent. Mm-hmm. If you're like a crappy kid and like your parents are like always punishing you, then like you, they're still gonna be doing that. Yeah, as as you go on, because that's just. That's how it is. But Mm -hmm. if you, like, behave yourself and, like, are actually, like, trying to, like, follow their rules and stuff, they might be more lenient when when you get to that age. Yeah? So what what were you? I was kind of... I started off, like, as a good kid, like, following all the rules. And then, see, the thing with me is I, I never did, like... Like, I never partied in high school. I didn't do drugs. Like I, like, I didn't do any of that stuff. The thing with me is I cost my parents a lot of money because I wanted to do a bunch of stuff. Like, I wanted to go to, like, summer camp or, like, mm-hmm. um, there was a music festival, concerts. Big concert guy. Yeah. I remember my first concert. Uh, I, me and Ryan and Gabe, we decided we were going to go to 21 Pilots. And uh, I think it was Fifth Third Arena. What it, I don't think it, it's in, Cincinnati? Like, in Cincinnati. Yeah, I think, it's, they, I changed, think they changed it. It's a new bank. But it was like 21 Pilots and then Juicy J was also performing. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> Hunter hunted. It was like some. It was called One Night Only or something. Mm. Um, it was like something on yeah. UC, UC's campus. And uh, I remember the week before that, we had to go to Disney. Whatever one's in Florida, Disney World. I uh, did. I always get. Dude, I don't. I don't know. I've, that I, was the only time I've ever been there. But here's the thing: people are like diehard about it. I've I brought that up. They're like, "Are you an idiot?" It's this in Florida and okay. this in California. Yeah, so I, I think it's Disney World. I, I wouldn't guess. People will roast us. Okay, don't don't roast us. But I'm like ninety percent it sure Disneyland. it's Disney World. Because Disneyland, the, for some reason, California. I always think of land. Why? I don't know. I always <laughs> think I think it's <laughs> land. <laughs> Because I feel like there's more, there's more as land as out there. It, is there though? It's yeah, just, we're on the same land. But it's like west. Like that's where all the land it's is. West. 
we are still on land today. It's just we have buildings and structures. And so I know about Florida. You you think of like the ocean and like yeah, there's water, there's still more land water in Florida. The, okay, this is just how my mind works. I'm 99 percent sure it's Disney World. California has a super long coast as I'm well. I'm aware of that. <laughs> Very aware of that. But this is just the way my mind thinks. Okay. Well, whichever one, the Disney Park, because I know they have Epcot down there. They have the... It's Disney World. Okay. We're moving on. So yeah. anyway, so <laughs> we were going to Disney World for a marching band trip. Mm-hmm. And the next weekend, like when we got back, like two days after we got back, we were going to 21 Pilots. Did I tell my parents about this concert? Absolutely not. Why? Because I'm so bad at telling them things. Because <laughs> here, here's another... Eh, we're getting into it now. So, I have, like, a fear, I'm sure. I mean, I know a lot of people do. Most people do. Fear of rejection from your parents. Mm. And I think... The reason I don't tell them things like right away is because I don't want them to say no, and then I'd be disappointed because I'm not allowed to do this thing. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't tell them about this concert, and they didn't like that very much. <laughs> I ended up getting grounded. I went to the concert, and then I got grounded afterwards huh. because I didn't tell them. Um, so yeah. Afraid of rejection. That's a big thing. I still struggle with that today. Yeah. Like just telling my parents anything. But like I'm 24 now. I don't really need yeah, you're, to. You're, I mean, it's more of just like, hey, I did this. Or hey, I'm going to do this. Hey, I'm doing this. Yeah. But it like it's the, the, the stuff that costs money. Mm. They're like, why are you spending all this money? And sometimes I would have to ask them for money. Yeah. And that's that's when it got... When it got a little dicey, like when I went to South, when I went to South Africa, mm -hmm. I told them way too late that, and I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> mm. But I was <laughs> I was also like in this phase of like trying to figure things out by myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when you to South uh, Africa, you were in college, so exactly, I was in college. I was like, I'm figuring this out by myself. But it got to the point where I'm like, I feel guilty about not telling yeah. my parents, so I'm going to tell them anyway. And then they end up helping a lot, which was great. But I could just mm. tell they weren't too excited yeah. about me leaving the country. <laughs> well, keep... keep um, my, mom, my mom worries a lot. I, I, I've seen that. Yeah. So keep that in the back of your mind. Because um, before we dig into that, I want to go a little bit into... Uh, my childhood as well. Yeah, I was, was going to ask you about that. Um, but I, I want you to keep the fear of rejection and also a couple other things in mind. But first, a message from our sponsor. Have you been to www.projectunaware.com <laughs> yet? Start <laughs> over. But first, a message from our sponsor. I would love to say sponsors, but currently it's just sponsor at uh, projectunaware.com. Have you been yet? I have, actually. Yeah, what's your yeah. thoughts? It's a great website. It's just very beautiful, like yeah. the layout of it, very easy to navigate. It only the took effort to code. Job. Yeah, but they're great at, they're great at coding. They're, they're great people over there. Yeah, they're great. Um, they have some awesome blog posts and some great podcast content. You should, you should go check them out on um, YouTube, Apple, Instagram, all, all the places you check people out. So, you know. If you haven't yet, I will. you should do that. Awesome. I will continue to do that. Well, back to the main message. Um, man, those guys at Project Aware, they're so great for sponsors. Yeah, they're so great. <laughs> shout out to them. Uh, shout out. Shout out. Um, oh, I was going to talk yeah, a little bit about- Yeah, tell us about your childhood. My childhood, which I, I think I I'm- I don't really know a lot about. I was about to like, say- Hardly anything, um, actually. Because I, I don't- I mean- if you know me, I, I am someone who, like, I do go deep, and, like, I have, I, I normally love deep conversations, but it's never, 
I don't want to say it's never about me because that just makes me sound like no one knows me because a lot of people do get to that point. It just takes a bit. And even then, I'm still hesitant to like bring really it gotta, into the conversation. You really got to like dig yeah. into Andrew in order to yeah. get something out of him. Like you will see me. I am generally a happy guy who like doesn't get stressed out. But there, there's stuff. And I just never talk about it because I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to stress Everyone's people out. Stuff, dude. I don't want to, I don't want to be a burden as my, I, I know that's wrong because people have given me a lot of crap about that and my mindset on that, but that's how I feel sometimes. Um, <laughs> so that being said, like I haven't really talked a lot about, you know, where I came from and I, I love my family. I have a very good relationship with a lot of them. All my brothers are close. So like you, I have, um, four brothers technically, five he's like my quarter he's my half brother's half brother so i call him my quarter brother there's no blood relation um but brother's we, a brother like we hung out and we still hang out like our, we just you know we're a pretty tight brotherhood what's like the age for you guys so we have dan who's the oldest um he actually has three sons there's literally like only boys in this family right now um and he i think man Carrying on the loony name. he's 33 or 34 now. So, you know, up there. And then there is 26, 22, but I'm about to turn 23. Um, Logan, who's my quarter brother. <laughs> Where's he at? He is uh, at least 19. He's at college. He's at UC. He's a sophomore now. So 19 or 20, somewhere around there. Ben is 19. And then Luke is 15. So, a decent span, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, growing up, I remember my childhood being so active. Like, we were always outside. We had a trampoline. Dude, like, and <laughs> one of, of my favorite memories did. is we would take pool noodles, and I actually did this during COVID, if you remember, and you put silver duct tape around the bottom we of it. We did do this. And it's a little foam noodle lightsaber. And we would just beat the living heck out of each other. Then we got smart, and we put, like, wooden staffs in them, so it actually hurt. <laughs> and they were like, you could actually whack of someone course. instead of, like, flimsy, you know? And then we got PVC pipe, and we'd cut the edges off, and we'd put them on the, like, we'd glue them onto the edges, so it was like a staff. Mm. Or, like, a dual-wheeled lightsaber, stuff like that. Of course. Um, so, I mean, yeah, we were, we were always super active in... I, I was, at school, a rule follower. No doubt about it. I remember getting, like, my first red letter, which was like a, you know, you get a punishment or something like that. They had different meanings. I don't remember. But it was it was something. And I, like, cried my heart out when I was a little kid because I got, I got in trouble. And I was Dude, like, no. we're the same. <laughs> <laughs> um. But, you know, coming into middle school is when I started getting into sports and just playing all that stuff. And um, and even into high school, I, I mean, I, I am pretty similar to why I am now, like, friend group-wise. I was friends with most people. Um, you know, I, I had my close, close friends. But generally, I knew everyone and, um, like, hung out with most people, especially, like, junior and senior year. Me and my best friend, Jameson, like, were we were fun people to hang out with. Just because we, we did... We did crazy stuff. Like, we went cliff jumping. We would do donuts with our cars. You can do them in the summertime. If you have the right car, you can slide trays underneath your back tires, and you can slide it, and it's great times. Um, we would just do dumb stuff like that. And, you know, it was like I am now where I would never really talk about the problems I had or what I was, you know, dealing with or – like even the down to the micro level of stuff. And I have a I have a story about this of people who constantly dug and dug and dug into who I am and even had me realize something that I I didn't realize till yesterday this was sophomore year of college. <laughs> um so like me when it comes to life, I generally don't like I already said it, I don't like burdening people, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Or another way of putting it is I never really seem like I have, like, pain or suffering, sorrows, problems going on in my life. Needs. Like, I never talk about people. I never ask people to help. I never 
like use people, you know, um, just because I never want to do that. If people are like, oh, how are you doing? I'm going to say, oh, I'm good. Oh, like, how's this? Oh, it's great. You know, and it normally is. Yeah. Um, but even if they're like, hey, you know, I, I this feel like this would bum you out. Are you okay? But yeah, I got, I'm fine. Like, I'm good. I'm fine. Um, I'm fine. I would say I'm, I'm fine a lot. And um, so I did Young Life. And uh, two of my co leaders, actually, one is Brett. She'll be a guest on here soon. And then another one is Lindsay. And we were in the car. And um, this was after like months long of Brett asking me a bajillion questions about who I was and like digging in. And who Lindsay kind of did the same. Huh? Who are she, you? Basically. Really? Who are you? <laughs> um, and we got to this conversation. I, I don't know how it came up. Oh, I remember. So Lindsay asked, like, can you describe your childhood home or childhood backyard or something like that? Mm. Um, something about the childhood home, whether it was like a room or something. And, you know, I, I like grew your up. your bedroom? Describe was, your childhood something bedroom? Something like that. And, you know, they were both went. And I remember just saying that, like, huh, you know, like I grew up in like a smaller room, you know, bunched up with all these boys and like we didn't really grow up with a lot of money, um, but I never really knew that either. And because we were just always outside playing with foam toys and making it work, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, they were talking about their upbringing and stuff like that, and you know, I, I talked about mine, and then they were like, "Oh, well, I think Lindsay had this other question. Maybe it was Brett. I forget which one." But they're like, "Oh, can you describe your relationship with your parents?" So, you know, we all went into this and it somehow got to the point how I talked about like my dad and I love my dad. He's the strongest worker I know, but he's also a man of not many emotions, right? Um, that's a lot of where I get it. You know, I, I've seen him cry once in my life. Um, and we're getting to this point and started diverging this and then they just like both turned on to me <laughs> and were like firing questions or whatnot. Tag teaming. And I don't know how it got to it, but it got to a point where I, like, admitted that growing up, you know, there was a lot of sadness and pain and depression in my family and around me, you know, even with my parents and brothers and, like, friends, close friends. And so, just, like, all of that being around me, I always wanted to be this source of good. I always wanted to help bring people up I never wanted to put more pressure or more pain or anything like that so I never wanted to be a problem I never wanted to you know like make people more sad if that makes sense now I didn't mm -hmm. say that like I, I I forget how it was but I answered a question that kind of like that and then Lindsay goes oh so that's why you never ever ever bring up problems that you're having and never ask people to help you and like and she just went down and she went off and I'm sitting in the back seat of the car. So like Lindsay's driving. There you go, Lindsay. Um, and I'm just sitting there as she continues to go like, and you know, you always say you're fine. You never want to bring up problems and don't trust people to help you. And she was saying it like not sarcastic. She was like being serious. meaningful and serious. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> like, wow. Whoa. Is this, is that, and you I, I wasn't offended by it. More of the thought was, is this true? Like, is that why I'm like that? Do you think it's true? And so after that, it sent me into this, like this is, that was probably the first time I ever thought back to my childhood and looked into how I am, like who I am today and how my childhood plays into that. Hmm. Huh. And so after that conversation, you know, I got back to my apartment, kind of just sat there. and was like, okay, maybe that is true. And started thinking about it and realized, like, that was me when I was, like, from seven to even in, like, high school and up to college. And it just became a habit. It became my rhythm to always try and make people smile, make people laugh. Like, that's where a lot of my sarcasm and witty comments come from is because it's just lighthearted 
you know, and I never, ever wanted to be this. I never wanted my presence to be negative, right? Like if I feel like I've caused someone pain, like I am freaking out on the inside. If I think I said something wrong or told someone wrong, like I feel sick to my stomach. That's the only time I ever get like that. Do you still feel that way? Yeah, at times, like 100%. Mm -hmm. And it, it is due to a large part of my childhood. You know, like after Lindsay, Brett, and I talked about all that and sitting back at my apartment, sitting there, it's like, holy crap. Like that is why I'm like this. Because I never wanted to make my mom sad, make my brother upset, make my friends mad, you know? And that just like started and trickled into who I am. You know, obviously there were times like, me and my brothers would get mad at each other. I turn into this little red flame ball and yell at him and whatnot. Flame ball. But generally, for the most part, I I never talked about any problems I had. Like if I got bullied at school, never brought it up. If I got a bad grade, never brought it up. And like from that point on, which is what I also want to talk about, and a more recent thought is that also causes a lot of why I'm independent. You know, and I'm definitely the most independent out of all of my brothers, you know, especially in high school, like this is one of my biggest regrets is not spending more time with my family. I was never home. And, you know, you brought up the parents thing is my parents didn't care. Like they trusted me. I was a good kid. Didn't do drugs. Didn't like got good, great, but like, I did my homework. They never had to get on me about that stuff. So I'd be gone for, weeks just sleeping at friends houses and you know football or whatnot and you know they'd know i'm safe right maybe like i'd get a text from my mom like hey are you gonna be home or something every now yeah. and then but no because they trusted you yeah because i was so independent and i was like a sophomore in high school just learning how to drive wow and i think i think a part of that is due to my childhood of like figuring things out for myself, never asking for help, never trying to, and like, I, I still see that in me today. Like, you know, with skydiving, there's so much to learn to it. There is so much. And I overanalyze myself, which we talked about in the, the second episode of the uh, podcast of just like how you can overanalyze yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I struggle with that deeply when I'm doing a task. Like I want to be good at it. And I'm like, oh, like, I'm just, ah, crap. Like, I messed up. And I just, like, think about it in my head because I never want to ask people for help. So I always try and figure out on my own. And that's due to who I was as a kid. And, you know, now looking back on it, looking at the independence, the not wanting to be a burden, like the past, I don't know, three years, I've been trying to work through that, trying to talk to more people and mm -hmm. talk about emotions. And gosh, it's been tough. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a big believer that your childhood has a huge huge say on who we are. Yeah. It's just hard to admit it. For me at least. It's hard to look back at it cuz there is I mean, things you don't want to look at. It's yeah. your past, right? You don't want to you don't want to go back. Or you know, it, it is our childhood and there's things we forget or we only remember the 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 peaks of emotion, whether that's good or bad. Like, we don't remember everything. It's just those highlights, right? So, I don't know. It's always interesting to go back. Um, so, for you, like, I know you yeah. said the fear of rejection. So, I mean, you, you got me thinking. Like, <laughs> like where's like that plan? Really thinking, you know? I don't even know if it's, like, the fear of rejection that really, like, shaped who I am now. I think a, lo a lot of my life... I've I've gotten like a lot of bad news like about like health issues and stuff mm -hmm. and like I've been picked on like a lot and it's like caused me to think that there's something inherently wrong with me. Mm. Like why are people picking on me in every phase of my life? Like I like, I don't know if it's, like, bullying. It kind of felt like bullying, but I was just, I kind of, like, laughed it off. Like, ha, funny. Yeah. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, 
And I just let was it, it. I was just it like I would let it happen. Guys joking around with each other, or was it like hurtful? It was hurtful. Okay. It, like sometimes. Yeah. And like I've never felt like a part of like a group of people. Well, I have, but like back back when back I was then. a child, yeah. like I'm just like. I didn't feel like people wanted me in their groups. Mm-hmm. I feel like I had to like insert myself in them. Yeah. If that makes sense. And like, like kind of invite yourself. Even? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. I mean, except for like my neighborhood squad. Or, like that's, <laughs> yeah. just, that's how it was. But like at school, I just, I didn't, I feel like I didn't fit in anywhere. Yeah. And then, like, in high school, actually, middle school. Yeah. It was really bad. Like, I hated middle school. Um, There was, it was basically, like, the group of guys in our class. Like, I was in, like, advanced classes or whatever. It was, like, the group of guys and then the group of girls. Like, the popular kids. Mm. Somehow I was, like, in the popular guys. But, like, I didn't feel like it. Like, there was still, like, some like, inside jokes between them that I wasn't a part of. So there was, like, an inner inner yeah. circle? Okay. So, um, that was also, like, a time when I had to wear, like, a back brace to school. And th- that already made me feel... Like, not great. Like, mm-hmm. people would mess with it or, like, punch it and stuff. And Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And Was, like, it, was it visible? It, it wasn't, like, I wore it under my shirt. Okay. So, it wasn't, like, out in the open. But, like, you could tell I was wearing it. And, like, mm. it, it just felt weird. Yeah. Just, like, I'm just, like, I know people are, like, thinking, like, well, what's under Oh, I mean, I bet you were just constantly thinking about, like... Yeah, I was just... I I just became, like, very self-conscious over, like, what I looked like and Mm -hmm. uh, what people perceived of me. And also, I wore glasses since I was in first grade. So I've always gotten, like, four eyes, nerd, geek, that kind of stuff. And, like, I've been... Like, I got tired of... The, all the glasses jokes and stuff. So ninth grade, I'm like, I'm getting contacts. <laughs> yeah. And I've worn contacts that ever since. And it's not easy for me to put contacts in either because I have Dude, really I think deep. I, could. I have really deep set eyes. Yeah. I I really have to reach in there to, to put those things in. Off topic, whenever I get those smart contacts, because I don't wear glasses or contacts smart or whatever, contacts. that have, you know, the HUD and everything in it, mm-hmm. I'm going to struggle so hard to put those in because I, I can barely touch my eye now. Like, if yeah. there's something in my eye, I'm like, ah, I'm trying to freaking get it out, and I'm so bad at it. So whenever, whenever we get those contacts and everyone puts them in their dang eyeballs, oh, that's going to be so painful. <laughs> Anyway, I go back to you. Yeah, but yeah, I just became like so super self conscious about yeah. what people thought of me, and like I wanted to fit in, and I wanted people to like me, which is kind of how I developed the nickname Tall Paul. I was literally and about like to really ask. just started like living for others, using it. Yeah, because like I got in eighth grade. The nickname, and it made people see me, and it made people like. It made me interesting. Gave you something. Gave yeah. me. It gave me. It, something. Well, it became your identity. It became my identity exactly. Yeah. So I, I kind of used that to my advantage, just going through life, introducing myself as Tall Paul. Yeah. Making a name for myself. Hanging out with people like people wanted to hang out with Tall Paul because he had he had a cool nickname, yeah, blah blah blah. But even then, I still felt like I was the butt of the jokes. Like I still felt like I was being picked on everywhere I went, not everywhere I went, but like 
in every like mm-hmm. social situation pretty much like can I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. So is, I really don't know the answer. Are you are you insecure today? Like yeah. do you still worry about what people think and what people say? Uh I would say No. Okay. When did that switch? I think it switched when when I was going through like the the rebrand process, like got rid of Tall Paul. Mm-hmm. I didn't really care what people thought about that. I'm just like I'm doing this. This is me. This is my decision. I'm gonna do what I want. Yeah. I mean, I if people wa- want to judge me, then that's on them. Like, I don't really. I mean, yeah, I might take offense to it depending on what it is, but. As far as like being insecure about it, I think I'm over that Mm -hmm. because I'm like, this is my life. I'm going to live it the way I want to. And I don't really like give a damn what anyone thinks, (laughs) honestly. So just from my perspective, I think a lot of people struggle with that. So what would you say to those people that, you know, are insecure and and worry about their social status and what people think about them, you know, because they they probably don't have a nickname that and a rebrand, you know, like they're probably just. Him I, d- I don't or, think it know. was like the rebrand. I, I that know, like made, but I think like in my, that you you decided to let go of what other people thought about you. It's a big thing. That's just it. it just revolved though. around like, so you, like just, you have to let go. But how? How? Like. I think, that, I think I that's think that's scary you just for a really lot of have people. to like realize that that stuff doesn't matter. Mm. Like what people say about you, it doesn't matter. It's just them talking, them trying to act cool in front of their friends, them thinking that they know you when yeah. they really don't. Mm. And if you put all that together. And realize that the only person that controls your life is you. It's easy to just go through life and not care what people (laughs) think. Yeah. I mean, I I think... Because I I feel like in general... Does that that make sense? Yeah, I would say that. I think that makes sense. I know it's 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 way easier said than done. Um, but I mean, I had like a lot of time to think about it, yeah, and like years of just like dealing with all this crap, mm-hmm. and I just eventually you just get tired of it. You're just like, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of feeling this way. Yeah, I'm not gonna let this control me anymore. Like I'm not gonna let these people, who really, some of them, I probably don't talk to anymore. Like, yeah. I'm not going to let them control the way my life is going and like the status of how I feel. Yeah. Because of like what they say. It's just words. Words can hurt though. They can. I mean, I know it's definitely easier said than done. Yeah. But I mean, for me, like, cause I never, I, I did struggle with it a bit. You know, I think everyone does, you know, going through middle school and high school and, yeah. Yeah, you're trying to find your, your social and status clicks and yeah status quo i think for me sophomore year is kind of what did it i went through a lot of gossip and drama and which i hate i hate drama which plays back into my childhood of just hating being a part of stuff like that mm-hmm. and then went going into junior year i had a teacher called um and he he is a big part of who i am today like his class, he taught a speech class, and he taught English, and he is still one of my biggest mentors and male role models. Just the confidence he instilled in me, like, that's where I got that. Because going into it. Like, that's another thing, confidence. Actually, yeah. Because that, that's what I was going to get into is starting junior year, I had confidence, 
and I started finding out who I was, like me, instead of, it, we call it a social mirror. I mean, that's the actual term for like psychology wise is when you look into that mirror, social mirror, and take everything about yourself from the social world, from other people, from, you know, whether it's social media or thoughts and processes and whatnot, um, that's called the social mirror. And I'd say for me that junior year is when I, when I shattered it. Like I got the confidence to see who I was not through that perspective. See, I think... <laughs> I think for me, so I'm oh, sorry, I completely left this part out. I was like the shyest kid that you ever met. Like, didn't talk to anyone. I was also really shy until junior year. Yeah. When I came out of my shell and I actually started like hanging out with people and doing mm. things and became part of a, a group that of friends that yeah developed you and yeah like i actually felt a part of that group yeah um that's that's funny but that that was that junior of high school yeah. yeah but yeah i was super shy like kind of socially awkward yeah like i didn't talk to a lot of people i didn't have a lot of friends i just tried yeah. to be a part of something but i and they and i think i didn't mention this either like there's there's a lot to it. Like I mean, it's years of who so, you are. We're not gonna get to it all today. Years, I know. A lot of the times when like we'd be in like a group setting and like we're talking and stuff. Yeah. I would have a thought that would like go to the conversation, but I felt like I couldn't interject or like give my I two feel cents. That. Give my two cents. Cause like I didn't know what to say and like if I would offend anyone or like if it would even make sense, because some of the things in my mind, they make sense in my mind, but when I put them out into the open, it just, it's all gibberish. I, mean, I think, I think I do that today still. Oh, I definitely know? do. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, I or think it's like, part of, I would, connection. I would like try to find like an opening in the conversation to like um, insert and that. Slide it in. And, be like, and then I, I would never, <laughs> it would never happen. Like yeah. I, I felt like what I said didn't matter. Like they would just kind of, oh, that's a good point. Uh, back to the main topic. Either that or like someone would talk over me. Like I would start talking and then it's like I wasn't even there. It's like I wasn't even talking. Someone would talk over me. Yeah. And I still felt that in college too. Dude, so I'm like hyper aware of, of that happening to other people. So much to a point in conversations when I notice someone like trying to say something or getting talked over. Like, I take control of the conversation. Like, oh, fill in the name. Did did you have something to say? I like, appreciate that. Because, I don't know, I, I just want to include everyone going back to that point of trying to be this positive source almost too much. I mean, that's a good much. strength uh, yeah. to have, like, inclusivity. It is. But I, like, is some the, the reason it can be a bad thing is it takes me out of the conversation. I'm starting yeah, to... Yeah, you're worried about everyone else, mm -hmm. like, being... Yeah. Or, you know, I notice someone say something once, no one hears it, they say it again, and then they just, like, look really defeated. Like, I'm, I feel so sad. I feel like you've noticed that with me I have. before. I, like, yeah. I, I feel that um, a lot. And so that's where I, like, then step in, and I, I have this just, I, I guess, boldness to be like, oh, what were you going to say? Or what do you think about that? Or... You know, I don't know. I, I, I'm so hyper aware of those conversations. So I know what you're getting. I'm there. hyper aware of feeling like that. <laughs> Dude, yeah. uh, Socratic seminars were mm. like my least favorite things ever. Because <laughs> the, I would just feel that every time. Yeah. Because I'm like, oh, I got a good I got a good thing I'm going to say. And then I never get the chance to say it because yeah. I'm too scared or that someone's going to talk over me or yeah. whatever. I mean, I, that's just, I think that happens to... Everyone, you know, I mean, for me, you brought up how you kind of got confidence your sophomore, junior year of high school when you junior found that real year. friend group. I think for me, looking back on it, I had fake confidence till junior year. You know, I was very, very shy as a kid. And then fifth and sixth grade, I had this friend who was very, very outgoing, very outspoken, almost too much. 
right? But it, like, kind of dragged me out of this shyness mud to where I was now hanging out with some of the cool kids. And, you know, like, he kind of just dragged me. (laughs) And so I almost had to fake who I was to be a part of this, right? You know, um... That's exactly what I and felt I, like. I just it just faked my confidence, and so every time I got up to do something that required real confidence, I was terrified. Until junior year, with with the teacher I had, and that's that's when I dropped all the crap and actually picked up my own. And so now, like I think people would say I'm a pretty confident guy because I actually am now. And. So it's just interesting to see where like the fake confidence versus real and just knowing myself comes in to play. See, like I now that you say that, like I think that the confidence I had junior year was the fake confidence. Mm. Cause like I was still trying to like fit in, like yeah. blah blah blah. I was like becoming an extrovert, like hanging out with as many people as I could. Mm-hmm. Like staying out late and all that stuff, like Try not saying no to people. <laughs> oh, that's a shout out call out to me right now. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> no, I didn't mean anything by that. But like, it didn't come. It like the confidence didn't really come until like the rebrand in college, mm. where I'm just like, I've been living a lie. Like all this, a lot of this has been fake. Like this isn't who I truly am. This isn't my identity. This isn't me. Like, I'm an introvert at heart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I... Yeah, you are. Like, yeah. hanging out with a bunch of people is exhausting. Crazy, man. <laughs> I was your roommate. I saw you, like, whenever we had a bunch of people over, it would always click after, like, maybe four hours of socialness, Paul would just disappear. I would disappear. He'd be downstairs, like, just... or he'd be somewhere else, all into, like, and I'd come down and be like, hey, Paul. And you're like, hey, like, you good? Yep. And then we would just go on about our lives because, like, I understood that about you that you needed to, to recharge. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, like before, like I was like always drained because I was constantly, you're always with people. I was constantly my, with people. What was people. that? My freshman year of co- even my sophomore year of college, you were constantly hanging out with people till like three in the morning too. Yeah, like it was like I would leave one group and go to another group. Yeah. Like, what I did junior year, yeah. Year, but <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, like if that's not you, that's not you. Yeah, I'm actually writing my blog post about this right now. That would that will have already been posted. So if you haven't read it, it's the third post um, on the site. So go check it out. It's uh, the title is "Who Am I?" I believe. Yeah, I'll make it that. So. Um, go look on the blog page on um, unaware.com or projectunaware.com. Um, but yeah, like finding your true self will give you confidence. I, I 100% agree with that. The, the thing I want to, like, I, I know this is for me at least because, you know, everyone's different, but I do think it would help generally everyone is, you got to be brutally honest with yourself too. You know, like we, we talked about it on the the fourth episode of this, you know, about your rebrand and Mandy and everything and how that was scary to start. Like it's, it's, you know, a lot of people have that midlife crisis, but that's, that's kind of what it is at our age is sitting there trying to figure out who am I? Like truly who am I when you take away all these, perspectives and you know, like that eventually like builds t- into who you are when you take away everyone else's like stuff view of you who are you look deep down that's so hard to do and you even have to think of like who you were before you started acting well go back to your kid exactly go back to your go childhood, to your childhood. cuz even even at the point of pulling back everything that that people have you know, I'm still at this point of you're a part of everything you've met and everything you've met is a part of you. Like the people you're around do shape your core. Mm -hmm. But there's an aspect to it that I guess, is it real or not? Like I would say in high school for you, 
that wasn't truly shaping who you were because you were putting on this fake persona. But ever since your rebrand and you've, you are now like who Paul actually is, like our friendship shapes you. Mm-hmm. Our friendship shapes me and changes you at the core because you're so confident and open enough to allow that to have influence on you. Right. I agree with like that. your real self. So they're like, real you know, <laughs> your real self. Because there even is to that, that core aspect. Like, you can't pull back other people's stuff sometimes because it is a part of the core, if that makes sense. Did I explain yeah. that well enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. But I still think there's a lot of fluff that you can get rid of. You just got to, like... And that's that's where you got to be brutally pick honest. Pick it apart. Yeah. To get to that core. But then... In, like, the core was is like constantly <laughs> like growing and like getting more like strength on it, and especially then. as you grow older. Yeah, I mean the way I'm thinking of it now, especially since you did that, and bringing back to how I brought up my childhood of not wanting to, like open that up. Like I built all this around it to protect it, like almost a wall. All so I never, fluff. I never shared who I was, because I. It, I was protecting it. Oh, yeah. There's some good visual stuff right here. You know, like... The, so, like, you, you know, got the wall. core. <laughs> right For here. all your imaginary people. Core. And then, see, Andrew built a wall around it. <laughs> so, you can't really get to the core yeah. because there's such a strong wall. Which requires the picking and digging. The the digging and the the smacking. Yeah. And the, but over the past couple of years, like, I've broken down some of that... And I'd say my core has gotten bigger because I'm more confident. Yeah, because like once you break down the wall, it can grow. That, it can grow exactly. Like it can, which I think we add more we stuff both have to done. it. Yeah, and then it gets bigger, and then eventually the wall is just gone. Yeah, but that, at least for me, was so hard to do, and I, I still go back. Like when I'm in stress, or let's say I don't really know someone that well. I still fall back to that of just not being open. But like the weird thing is though, is people who don't like really, really know me, like just like my friends think I'm more of an open conversational guy, but the people who try and dig then realize how closed off I actually am. So it's, I uh, that makes me sound Look like at I'm you so opening f- yourself up to the world on this podcast. Dude, well, that's part of this is, I don't know how it's going to go. And this is stuff I've tried talking about, but I just don't because I'm so bad at it. And even me saying that right now makes me sound like this fake person. Like, if you know me, you don't, you do know me. You just don't know. Like, I don't know how to describe it because I'm not fake to people. I never lie about anything. I'm more of just, I just don't you open hide. up the deeper levels because I don't intentionally hide it. You don't intentionally I just don't hide bring it, it you up. just don't. <laughs> You don't talk about it because it kind of hurts to talk about. Yeah, it's 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 not normal. It's against my like. Yeah, I have been like doing the it way for twenty the years way of my been, life. The way you've been raised, the way you've gone through life, is that you don't talk about that stuff. Twenty years of habit. You don't really show emotion. Like that's just how you are. Uh, yeah, and then going and like really starting it in between that sophomore junior year of college of. Oh hey, I'm 22 now. Maybe I should know how to talk about emotions when someone tries to go really deep and into my life. Because mm-hmm. I'm a great listener. Yeah, I, mean, so. I can ask great questions and get to someone else's emotions. But when they try that, do that back to me, I either like ha, 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 different conversation. <laughs> you know, I've done that to you. I know. <laughs> I, I dig. I'm a digger. <laughs> you are. <laughs> um, which props. There have been people in my life that have dug. And I, I, it's, I have to be thankful because I know they care about me because I am stubborn. And the amount of time I know it takes to look at that <laughs> camera like that. <laughs> um, like, just to even start, I know it's problematic because I, I am very stubborn and it's hard to even get to start digging. Like, I have, like, another outside wall that, I don't know, you know. Well, so, you got like, you got like the guards around, the wall. 
<laughs> and the, those are really tough to like yeah knock out and then you got a, a wall around mm-hmm. the actual the the main I have, wall. I have a moat i have a, you moat. Have a moat yeah exactly <laughs> so you have the guards yeah and then you have a moat on every side mm-hmm. and then you have a wall yeah <laughs> Um, and then inside the wall, there's like a, a passcode to like get <laughs> to the core. Yeah. And then once you like figure out the passcode, then <laughs> you still going. You truly know <laughs> who Andrew Ludy is. So if you could tell by Paul's demonstration <laughs> and um, drawing, if you would, it it. I, I should have like drawn it and then yeah, put like taken. Um, <laughs> takes a lot of effort to dig. I'm aware of that now. I wasn't because I never even admitted that to myself. Now I'm saying at a point after trying and working, I, I do open up more. It's not as hard. That's a good thing. So, you know, there's growth there. But it, it's all, I think the growth only started when I looked back at my childhood and admitted that's who I was like 20, 20, whatever years of habit. That's who I was and like who I am back then. Like mm-hmm. that's who I, you know, and that was hard to admit, you know, it's almost like a life shattering thing. And I mean, even for you to sit there and think about your childhood and look at, you know, the fear of rejection, how it's impacted you or sitting there and being like, it's, I was hard made for fun me. Of. it's hard for me to open up to some people too. It's it's just a hard thing, but for people to break free and find who they are, like their true identity, you have to do that. Got to. I mean, unless you just want to go run off to, I don't know, what's a cool place? Europe. Europe. France. Let's say Switzerland England. or France, one of those no, places. Switzerland. Switzerland. Yep. Get a new identity and start your life over again. If you don't want to do that, then you got to break down your walls to yourself and admit where you came from, who you are and like the, the true core or else you're just living a life. That's not you, which, you know, I'm going to go out on 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 a, but it's not you on a blank statement and shoot a shot here. Today's age, which we kind of talked about this with Manny and social media. And I mentioned the social mirror earlier. A lot of people, too many people, take their identity based off what other people say. Over 50%. Yeah. That's a big number. I mean, I was guilty of it. I was too. I I mean, even now, like I, I literally based my whole life off of what other people were saying about me. And I really, you just, you just have to realize When you do that, that's not who you actually are. I cannot emphasize it enough. That is not who you are. Mm. You might think it is, but like if you really look deep down, you'll find that's not you at all. That's That's a scary thing to do. I know. Trust me, I've done it. Like... I wanted so badly to be this, like, outgoing, (laughs) extroverted person. And I wanted everyone to like me. I wanted to have all the friends. (laughs) I wanted everyone to be my friend. And it didn't come until, like, I really looked deep down. And I was like, this isn't me. This is not making me happy. It was never good enough. It's not it was, exactly. It was never good enough. It's not. It's not me. Mm-hmm. I am an introvert. <laughs> I'm not outgoing, and like I don't need a lot of friends to be happy. Like I have my close friends, who like I have built incredible relationships with, and then I have like friends who like I like to keep in touch with, and then like my family and stuff and. That's okay with me. That's that's all I need. Mm-hmm. 
I would agree. I mean, I've seen, like, I didn't know you too well when you were tall, Paul. We weren't, like, I wasn't close to tall, Paul. Because you couldn't get near me. <laughs> I mean, I barely knew you. And you'd be like, hey, man, you want to hang out? I'm like, sure, dude. I don't really know you, but yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's how I was. That's how I was. And now, like, it's even, it's even weird for me to sit here and know who you are and be like, how, that's the same guy. But it isn't. I'm uh, same body, but not the same different Paul. guy. Like you carry yourself very differently. It's it's just crazy to me to look it's back like, on some of that. Like I remember sitting by Crossroads and seeing you across the street with the long hair yeah. and everything. Oh my gosh, the long hair! It's just yeah. it's it's weird looking back onto onto that memory of you, and even me. That wasn't me. Yeah. So it's it's just it's cool to see that growth. But again, like you gotta maturing, look back. You maturing. gotta look back and admit where you were. And you can celebrate that growth. You know? It's okay to be like, hey, you know, yeah, there's still growth I wanna have, but I was there. Exactly. And now now I'm here. Celebrate that. That's a win. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. Like, I think at the end of the day, it's like you're growing, you're maturing, you're becoming wiser, and that will help you yeah. with finding your true true self. Because then you, like, actually know what to look for deep down. Mm-hmm. Man. I think that was... Um a pretty thought-provoking conversation. <laughs> I, would, I would agree so. I, I would, you know, people listening to this, I I would love for you just to sit back and, and like, look at who you are. Maybe you're not where you want to be. That's okay. Like, you have to admit that first, and that that's a big step. And then just go from there, you yeah. know? Bring cool people around you. Bring people you love who, who love you. And just and start being open. That's what I had to do. Mm-hmm. Granted, there's a lot of digging from those people. <laughs> a lot of digging. A lot of digging, but. Or just like go to someone you trust and tell them how you're feeling. Tell them all about yourself. Mm-hmm. Like. This is, like, who I think I am. I was listening to these two dudes talk about it on a podcast, and, like, um, I don't think I've been, like, honest with myself, and, like, this is who I think I am at my core. So, I mean, just, like, get it out there. Mm -hmm. Like, tell somebody or write it down. I don't know if you don't want to talk to someone. I think think it helps talking to someone, though. It definitely does. But, like, if you need to write it down first so that you know, like, what you're going to say to that person, write it down. And when you write it down, one one thing that helps me is just the question of, can I be more specific? Mm-hmm. And that leads me to break it down even more. Because if I ever talked about something as such, it's so broad. And so I have to, like, require myself to ask that so I even get, de- like, deeper and deeper. Yeah. And so if you're someone like me that struggles... To go deeper, even with yourself, like ask yourself those questions or, you know, have other people ask you those because that it helps a lot when you can sit there and, and open up about that stuff. It leads to a lot of growth and leads to a lot of, I mean, just better relationships, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, um, definitely that, that went. That didn't go where I thought it was going to go. We started with the topic of childhood, but I'm glad that, I mean, I think that's useful, and I think that was a cool conversation. So, yeah. Um, we are we are going a little bit long, so I do want to transition a little bit. But also know, guys, like we will continue to be pretty open, and, and there's a lot about us that you guys don't know or that I don't know about Paul. Or I don't know about <laughs> Andrew. And... Like I said this in my first blog post is I promised you that this will be raw, it will be real, and it will be open. 
that means it's going to be imperfect. It's going to be messy. It's going to be hard. You know, there's topics I want to get to that that will be hard. That I can perceive some tears being shed. There will be tears. Um, and there's also going to be, like, fun and happy topics. And, you know, I'm just so excited to see where this goes. And that, that being a kind of perfect leeway is this might be launching in, in October or whatever. November. But... Um, we, we did just launch Project Unaware at the, at the time of this recording two weeks ago. Yeah, we did. Um, and it, you know, I just want to kind of talk a little bit about it. I know people, this will be episode seven, so seven weeks in. So it's a little weird for them to listen to it now, <laughs> but I just want to be, you know, open and honest because that's what this is. You know, yeah. it has, it has been a, such a fun, fun two weeks. It really has. A little stressful. Um, cause I really did beat the clock with the website and, and just, you know, pushing myself and everything. But, um, and me and Paul always joke about this, of that first episode that we launched, you know, going back and listening to it, I listened to it over 15 times Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I was so nervous, so nervous to release it because at that point we had six episodes recorded. And just looking at the the overall quality of the first episode, I was just like, people are going to hate this. <laughs> Which, if you notice, plays into a lot of stuff we've talked about on this show. Mm-hmm. Like, going into that release, I was worried about how people would take it, how people would view me after it. Like, even now I'm hesitant to, like, I have, I have a, a brand or a company or a podcast or a blog. Because people are going to be like, oh, really? You know, and... Oh, really? You're starting a <laughs> podcast? Okay, yeah. And, and it, like, those thoughts, even though I'm sitting here, I cannot stress this. I think I've said every episode. We're hypocrites. Yeah, we are. I can't stress that enough every episode, but, like, know that this is just the proof that you got to fight through it. Because I, I'm loving this right now. And when I when I clicked publish, it was like this big weight off my chest. I was like, I did it. Like, there's no going back now. There's no going <laughs> back. It's public. This, I, I mean, I started writing about this in March. Yeah. Launched on September fifteenth. Months of work, and it was just like a. I it, it it's it's done. Did it like. It wasn't perfect. That first episode was by far our worst. And the amount of people that reached out with positive feedback, I, I just couldn't, ca- like, I couldn't stop smiling. Yeah. The amount of people I haven't talked to in years that texted me or DM me on Instagram. And I was like, hey, I listened to this and this is what I thought. I also had a little challenge of Venmoing a dollar at the end of it. And I had, I lost like 12 bucks. Um, a lot of people told me they finished it, but they didn't ask for the dollar, so I didn't. I didn't Venmo them a dollar. So did they um, really finish it? I don't know, or maybe they're just too nice. A guy texted me today and um, asked for a dollar, and I Venmoed him a dollar, and Venmoed me back saying podcast was too good. <laughs> I should be paying you to listen. <laughs> Venmo <laughs> me my dollar back, and I was like, oh. <laughs> so you know, I, it's it's exciting. You know, two weeks in, an episode is going to launch tomorrow. With oh Luke shoot! Yeah, um, that one's all ready to go. But you know, it's 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 exciting. It's scary. Tomorrow it's is in September twenty seventh. Seventh. So you guys could get a math today. We're recording this on the twenty sixth of September. Um, yeah, it's it's been cool. I don't know, like, what have been your thoughts, Paul? Yeah, like. Like Andrew, I've gotten like some texts and like feedback and it's all been like positive things. Like I, I listened to both of the first episodes with my brother, Luke. Shout out Luke. And uh We talked about him earlier. You snitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, and uh he's giving me good feedback. Like he really likes it. Um we just wanna be like a 
open and vulnerable with you guys and like we want you guys to be like a part of the conversation like make you think and uh just like i mean even if they disagree even if you disagree like let us know yeah (laughs) we won't get offended no but like we're just we're here to open your eyes and thought provoking conversation make you think yeah yeah but yeah, it's been so cool to see like all the, like Andrew sends me like the analytics for <laughs> stuff, and I'm like, that's I didn't Dude, expect that. I was like expecting, the first episode. So I'll be honest, five five listeners on the five, first episode. Yeah. Like, As of know, right now, we have, I think it's like seventy audio and over twenty something YouTube. Yeah, like that's crazy. Ninety people. Unique, unique visitors, because I see total views, total listens, or whatever. Yeah. But, like, totally unique visitors. I mean, to the website, and has over 200. That's crazy. Like, Did we, not expect we, that. We were just, like, blown away Yeah, by how many people actually tuned in, however they listen to it, YouTube, mm-hmm. Spotify, Apple Podcast. Yeah. Uh, just, like, people interacting on Instagram. Uh, liking our posts on Instagram, following us. We're almost at 70 followers now. Yeah. Just, it's it's, it's cool. Everything it's is cool. moving so fast, and it's just so great to see, like, people yeah. are actually taking what we say seriously and, like, yeah. not just, like, oh, yeah, these guys started podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think man. that was my biggest fear going into it, to be honest with yeah. everyone, was it's just another... Another just, podcast that just it's another like college bro, quality. Just another college bro podcast. Yeah, like, no, but we're talking about real, real stuff right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll say one more thing um, before we get off, because I know this isn't probably the most enjoying conversation for you guys to sit listening to wherever you're <laughs> listening to this, but I, I think one of my favorite, I don't know. Like, feedback I got was my oldest brother, Dan. You know, I didn't even text this out to my family yet. So he probably saw it on Instagram or wherever. And he texted me. and was like, hey, I listened to your first episode. I think you have an amazing idea. And I think you can go somewhere. Like, keep up the good work. And he's a busy dude. Three kids, like, very high up in his job. And it, it was just, it meant the world that he took his own time to listen to it all. And reach out to me, you know, so we yeah. don't see each other that much. Yeah. We, you know, he was pretty much, he was, he's a lot older than me growing up. So, you know, I mean, he was in high school when I was like, still a kid, you know? <laughs> and so there wasn't ever that like true openness of a relationship. I always like look up to him. He, he's an awesome guy, like a great figure. And it, it just meant the world that he did that. Yeah. It's like people did that for the first episode. And it just made me on fire to, to keep and going. we're both like, and that's the worst episode. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times everyone's like, I'm going to check it out. I'm like, just so you know, it's the worst episode. <laughs> just wait till episode two. Just, just please <laughs> come back. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's been awesome. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. And, you know, I look at it. It's like, if we do this for a year, two years, three, like the growth. So we die. In the 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 thing I'm excited is to see how it helps people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you like know. we want to hear your stories, yeah. your success stories. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's a project to help people. You know, have conversations and help open up people, and eventually, when there is money coming in here, I want to use that for good and help people chase their dreams and try new things. And like, I'm excited to get there, man. Me so, too. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll end it there. Yeah. I think that's a good thought. Um, well, I appreciate everyone tuning in. Um, if all goes to schedule, next week we will potentially either have Brett on or it will just be me and Paul. But either way, it's um, going to be a good episode. Check it out. Um, Paul already mentioned this earlier, but you know we do have a blog, and we write for real over there. Um, it's not perfect. It's... It's uh, it's raw. Yeah, it is. 
So go check it out. Um, different people, different styles, different different ways of writing, Topics. but it's real. So go check that out on projectunaware.com. Um, and just have a have a great rest of your day, guys. Yeah. But let us know what you thought. You know, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, please. Please.